Welcome to Mike Morrison Ministries Church at the Barn, Tuesday night. By so uh, would, would you open your Bibles to Ezekiel, please? Uh, 36. Ezekiel 36. How many of you have read Ezekiel lately? <laughs> it's Ezekiel chapter uh, 36, and let's start reading in verse 25. And uh, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you you and heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Did that happen? Yeah, thank God it did. That's prophecy of the New Testament and the Old Testament. Happened all the time. Now, but I read that one so that we could skip down here to verse 33. Thus saith the Lord God in that day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the wastes shall be builded. I'm going to read the Amplified Bible here. Thus says the Lord in that day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also cause Israel's cities to be inhabited, and the waste places shall be rebuilt, and the desolate land shall be tilled, and that which had lain desolate in the sight of all who passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. Uh, the blessing of the Lord causes things that, are, that looked ruined to the world to be brought back to life by God's people. And uh, of course, this, this is talking about Israel but it's also showing God's way and it's showing the blessing and it's talking about the Messianic Jews in Israel here because it's talking about the people who've had their heart changed. And uh, a Messianic Jew is simply a Christian. A Gentile is a Christian. A Messianic Jew and a Gentile are in the same thing. They're in the family of God. So anything God's talking to, um, whenever God's talking to the Messianic Jewish people, he's talking to us. Amen. We're set, God set us here to restore anything that's wrong. All right? So now let's turn, please, to... Uh, um, Ezekiel 28. I just want to spend some time in this chapter tonight. <clears throat> um, Let me find my notes here. I 
think I brought the wrong Bible. I don't like it when I do that. I study in this, study in one Bible all day long and then bring the other one to. <clears throat> um, It's not Ezekiel, that's why. It's the second Chronicles. And it's not 28, it's 20. Second Chronicles 20. I'm gonna entitle this, I think, this message tonight, Ship of Fools. I thought Ship of Fools was an oil patch term I looked it up, you know, thinking, trying, wondering where it came from. It, it, it actually, Plato used it in the, one of his books that he wrote way back. It's an allegory intended to represent the problems of government prevailing in a political system not based on expert knowledge people who are leading a country uh, fighting over the steering, the helm of the ship. Not any of them, not a one of them knows how to steer, but they all want to be in charge. <clears throat> Sound familiar? <laughs> so I guess we could title this Dealing with the ship of fools. In fact, go a step farther and call it dealing with the warship of fools. Right now, there is this woke idea that has taken over the United States of America, or it's not just America fighting this. It's a devil firing the best guns he's got in the latter days trying to keep this, trying to Dethrone God's what he's trying to do. He said, I will exalt my throne above the throne of heaven. And he's never quit trying that. And he's a liar. He's the father of liars. There's no truth in him. He still thinks he can beat God. He still does. He had an interruption in his plans when God fired him down here like a lawn dart. And he had to get in a snake's body in order to get to where he even pay any attention to him in order to steal from Adam what God had given Adam. But we just read about what happened in that day. Jesus turned the whole thing around. And Almighty God went down inside of anybody that will receive Jesus as Lord to live. And now the devil is up against people who have Almighty God living on the inside of them, which means if those people are walking with God, he's setting himself up against God. When he comes against you, he's coming against God. If he comes against me, he's coming against God. As long as I follow God's directions, he can't touch me with a 10-foot pole. And his weapons, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, are carnal, demand, carnal weapons. There's no weapon come against us, but such as carnal to man. Common to man. They're carnal weapons. You and I, our weapons are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We've been given supernatural weaponry. So imagine this ship of fools as a pirate ship the sails and the cannon and the bad, mean bunch. And imagine the army of God, the navy of God, in a nuclear submarine. <laughs> That's exactly what woke is up against. The woke move in this nation once they find out about it, 
is up against the anointed ecclesia of Almighty God, given God's weaponry. All we need to do, church, is um, begin to annihilate the enemy. There's this idea that we're up against uh, this fight where we have to get out and argue our way through this problem and argue our way through this problem and fight fire with fire over here and fight fire with fire over here and fight fire with fire over here. That's not working. It hasn't been working. That's how we lost everything to begin with. That's how the last 50 years got away from the church and now we're dealing with this woke mess that we're going to have to straighten out. How do we straighten it out? By doing what we should have done in the first place. Instead of depending on that natural show up and say something, we, bat, we, we bathe what we're about to show up to in prayer. And, we, and then when, when we bathe it in prayer, we expect God to take over. We expect supernatural things to happen. We fire the weapons in the name of Jesus, expecting something to come apart in tiny little bitty bits of vapor. Can you imagine a nuclear torpedo? What, are, what is a sub-fire a nuke, when they fire a nuke? It's a torpedo, isn't it? A missile underwater? Up in the air and comes down on it? Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> what would happen to this man of war pirate ship? <clears throat> Vaporized, basically. Church, that's what we're here to do. We're here. We're not here to fight with the with the woke government. We're here to blow it out of our nation. That's what we're here to do. But we need to do it the way that God said to do it. Let's look at Second Chronicles now, and we'll go through down through this pretty fast. Second um, Chronicles twenty, and I'm probably reading the Amplified Bible. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, and with them the Menuites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. It was told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea and from Edom. And behold, they are from Hazazon Tamar, which is in, in Gedi. What the, what's happening there is this enormous allied army has come against Israel, and they're just not that big. It's like they're in a heap of trouble. Look at that, verse 3. Then Jehoshaphat feared, set himself determinedly as his vital need vital need. He's going to die if this need's not met. To seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast in all Judea and Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord yearning for him with all their desire. This I have not seen in the body of Christ, the United States of America. But as we read this story, you're going to find out this is what God's put us here to do. And keep in mind, we're, we're reading Old Covenant people standing up with the Old Covenant. God's not in them like he's in us. We have such... We have such a much better covenant. We're righteous before God. 
We're not righteous because of blood of animals that covers up our sin. We're righteous because the blood of Jesus remitted sin, blew it completely out of the water. It's a non-issue, and Almighty God lives on the inside of us. This power is in us right now. So here's what happened even under the Old Covenant. Uh, um, you, you can read down. I don't think I'll read all that. Let's read, look at verse 9. Well, maybe I should, because this is what Jehoshaphat prayed. Let's, let's read uh, verse 4. Jehoshaphat gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all their desire. And Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Don't you rule over this bunch that's come against us? In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. What is this? Praise. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. He's calling on that covenant. F-R-I-E-N-D should have been capitalized. It's his covenant blood brother. He's calling on a blood covenant. They dwelt in it, and you have built you a sanctuary in it for your name. And that's the name Yet, hey, Bob, hey, Jehovah in English, probably. Um, the covenant, the covenant almighty God. <laughs> if evil comes upon us in the sword of judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you for your name and the symbol of your presence in this house and cry to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. Amen. Now, this isn't just Jehoshaphat. This is Je Jehoshaphat and every father, mother, baby, and child, you'll see as we read through here, in Israel. They were in a desperate strait. Desperate, desperate time. Verse four, uh, yeah. verse ten. And now behold, the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt, and who they, whom they turned from and did not destroy. Behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment upon them? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And all Judah stood before the Lord. All Judah stood before the Lord with their children and their wives. The, the King James there says, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. The whole bunch, all of them. Age was not, there weren't any teenagers off doing their own thing. <laughs> Desperate time. He said, hearken, wait, wait a minute, this is verse 14 now, this is one I'm probably reading to get to. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon uh, Jehaziel, the son of Zachari Zachariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of uh, Jeiel, the son of Matiah, <laughs> Levite, of the sons of Asaph in, in the midst of the assembly, he said, Hearken all Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat. 
the Lord says this to you, be not afraid or dismayed. Now, what was in verse 3? Then Jehoshaphat feared. They're terrified. And they come to him terrified. The first thing God said, now look, look, verse 21.1, the ship of fools came against Jehoshaphat. That's the first thing that happened. Verse 3 is the next thing that happened. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself determined to seek the Lord. Now, the third thing that happened is in verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon, in, in verse 15, and the Spirit of the Lord said, Hearken, uh, be not afraid. First thing he told him, fear not. How many of you have ever looked up how many times the Bible says fear not? Yeah, God doesn't mean I understand that you're going to be afraid anyway, so just go ahead. Fear not means fear not. Cast your care on him. Give me your care. The king and every single man, woman, child, and baby in Israel, give me your fear. Be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go down to them. Behold, now this is what they need to do. How did they find out what they need to do? They went to God and asked him. When you come up against a big problem, what are you going to do about it? Go to God and ask him. And when he tells you, do what he says. He told them, tomorrow go down to them. Behold, they will come up to the uh, ascent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the ravine before the wilderness of uh, Jerel. Now here's verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now, they're going out against them, but they're not going to have to fight. Does this sound like the New Testament? What do, what do ambassadors for Christ do in the New Testament? Stand. And having done all to stand, therefore, gird yourself, put on the full armor of God, and stand. With the word of God, deliver the word of God. As a king, de decree, and as a priest, represent God, the people to God, and God to the people. Your king, priest, ambassador representing God in the earth, and you're also a warrior in the army of God. That's the fight. That's how we fight in the New Testament, the same way they're fighting in, in 2 Chronicles 20. Stand. You'll see, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Does, it, does it, the Word of God not say the battle, the battle it belongs to the Lord? There is a battle you and I fight while we're standing. It's right behind the eyes and right between the ears because it's your soul and it's operating in your brain. And there's a thought battle that you and I war against. That's where we fight. We're fighting thoughts that are coming from the world, the flesh, the devil, and religious Christianism ideas that aren't even biblical. And we fight the, the lies that are coming in our head by casting those thoughts out. And we take the good thoughts of God and we, we say them. We believe them in our heart and say them with our mouth. That's the fight we have. That's the only battle we fight. 
This is the way we fight. We stand and keep our thought life from fear. We keep the fear on God and we keep casting out the enemies. The enemy's got to get to the people. He can't whip God. But God's set this up so that he comes at the enemy through you. So if he can get you and I thinking fear thoughts and doing something besides standing in faith, he's got us. That's the way he wins. That's the way he's been winning, but this is the way he's going to lose. He got this far because we weren't following directions. He's coming down fast because we're going to start following directions. So here's here's what happened. Uh, Stand. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Verse 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. They began to worship God. They went out there where he told them to be and began to worship God. And some of the Levites and the other Ites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. And they rose up early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe and remain steadfast to his prophets, and you shall prosper. Now look, they're out here in front of this vast coalition of armies, of nations, standing out there in front of them. Don't you fear. <clears throat> now, verse 21, here comes the good part. Watch these next four verses. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy priestly garments. Kings and priests. And they went out before the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and loving kindness endureth forever. Now, this is where we're going. Right? That's I'm doing all this to get to that. That's an English translation of the Hebrew word H-E-S-E-D. I'm going to say Hesed this time. Hesed, Hasid, Hasid. I've heard it pronounced so many ways, I don't know. I don't know anything about Hebrew except I know what Hesed. I know what Hesed isn't. It's not mercy. And that's what it's translated most of the time in the King James Bible. It's not grace. It's not loving kindness. But if you throw them all together, <laughs> loving kindness, mercy, grace, it's getting closer to it all the time. But what Hesed is, is God's drive as the greater in the covenant to meet the need of the lesser in the covenant. It's, it's God's desire to keep the promise he made to Abraham and this whole Jewish nation and to the church now. It's a drive inside of God to make his word come to pass. It's who he is. God is. When the Bible said God is love, this is the love it's talking about. Agape in Greek, but it's H-E-S-E-D in Hebrew. Okay, here's what happened, verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord said ambushments against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. 
and they were self-slaughtered. For suspecting betrayal, <laughs> the men of Ammon and Moab rose up against those of Mount Seir, utterly destroying them. And when they had made an end of the men of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. Let's start killing each other. I can see the liberal, woke leaders, ship of fools. We don't even need to fire a nuke. By the time we get, by the time they get to the point of battle, there's liable to be nobody left on the ship. I've, I've, I heard, uh, I heard a prophet years ago now, two or three years ago, prophesy that this whole liberal mess would turn on itself. Hmm. Eat their own. Eat their own. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, I believe this could be a picture of what we're about to see, and it could happen in 2023. Everybody's waiting for Trump to get in office. This isn't a Trump deal. This is a church deal. This is the ecclesia taking their place where Almighty God put them, doing what Almighty God told them to do, and then whoever God puts in the government, we're still in charge of the government. The ecclesia is the pup, is the is the agents pulling the strings of the government. That's what the word ecclesia, translated church, is all about. It's the people behind the government. People running the, from the second heaven, controlling the second heaven. Hallelujah. Intercessory prayer is vital. <clears throat> Intercessory prayer of faith, not fear. This is Old Testament prayer here. They're scared. They're praying to God. They're doing everything they can out of fear. He said, quit that. Quit that fear. We have a, co we have a covenant. God's on the inside of us. We don't have fear in here. All the fear we have dealing with in our head. But in our heart, there's no fear where Almighty God lives. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 24, And when Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked at the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none had escaped. How many, peop how many people are we talking about? Allied armies wiped each other completely out in one day. <laughs> when God takes over the fight, you're, a natural mind cannot go, you just can't see how something this bad can be that good that fast. Why? Because this is not natural, it is supernatural. And it's time that the church started expecting something besides natural. And I, I don't believe we have. I just don't believe we have. Any time we'll run from a flu bug, we're not exactly ready to fight. When the woke government goes, boo! You quit meeting together. You get out of your churches and don't come back till we tell you you can. Yes, sir, big daddy. Whatever you say, Mr. Government, we're on it. It was not our finest hour, and we're going to get another shot. This isn't over yet. 
we're going to win this time. But we're going to have to wake up and we're going to have to do things different than we did last time. And the way that the the way we do it different is to expect the supernatural weapons that God has given us to deliver us. You you understand what we're up against right now is not a 50-50 tussle between good and evil. What what this this uh, liberal mess is trying to cram down the American's throat. It's not just the church they're up against. 75% of the people uh, in the country um, don't want any part of what's going on right now. And that means a whole bunch of Democrats are turning on their, are turning on these leaders. The ship of fools has uh, got out of hand. They've overplayed their hand. And uh, how do you, how, <laughs> how can you possibly stay in office and have 75% of the nation not want you in there? We've got to get this voting machine thing fixed. How's that going to happen? Prayer, it's going to happen because the body of Christ won't put up with it anymore. We're going before Almighty God, and we're going to have this fixed. A free country cannot exist. A, a, a constitutional republic can't exist without that vote being pure. And when it is, it's going to landslide anything woke completely out of the office. Maybe not. Maybe there'll be a handful from the very liberal edge of this nation, but it won't be enough. Hallelujah. It's coming. Why is it coming? Because Christians are going to quit making the biggest thing of their day a distraction from Almighty God. Because people are going to get up in the morning and seek God with all their hearts. And we don't have to seek God waiting for him to come down. He's on the inside of us. We seek God. We're seated together with him in heavenly places every morning when you get up. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. And just go before him and spend some time with him. Five minutes would be more than most Christians have spent in months, years maybe. I know the first time I set myself to pray, I, I vowed I'd pray an hour a day. That wasn't real smart, but that's what I did. And I, uh, well, I set my clock and I started praying. I prayed everything I knew how to pray and I looked down at my watch and I hadn't got to 10 minutes. In fact, I don't think I probably got to five minutes. And I'd prayed everything I could think of. So I logged it. And then I hang in there again. I get a few minutes and I'd log. I finally got to 60 minutes. Somewhere along the line, it occurred to me you know, you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can pray in tongues. That worked a whole lot better. <laughs> And after praying in tongues for a while, long periods of time in tongues, is something I'd never done because it never, you know, never made a lot of sense. What I was praying wasn't making any sense, so say a few words and that'd be the end of that. But if you gotta pray an hour and you don't have anything to say in English, you might as well let her rip in tongues. By faith, I prayed for an hour. I'll tell you what, after a few days of that, going on, I wasn't having to watch my watch anymore. I was starting to develop something. I was starting to develop a new way of thinking. And what God had put on the inside of me was starting to develop and was coming up out of my spirit. And by the time I got through that 30 days, I, 
could never be the same again after that. 30 days, 30 days of praying for an hour a day, I think anybody that sets herself to do that is going to find out you're going to have to get this tongue thing working. And I'll, let me tell you something about tongues right now because I can hear this questions out there. It's probably not in this room. It's probably somebody online right now. If you've got a noise that's coming up, make the noise. If it's a groan, groan. And if that's all that's there, just keep groaning for an hour. Because there's more to it than that. But there's a string on this. And you start doing what God told you to do, you get to tugging on that string. And when it comes up out of there, you can have a hard time shutting it off. You won't want to. Not that you couldn't if you wanted to, but you won't want to. It's just a... It just gets... It gets hard to say it clearly. Amen. And it's pulling on. There's 11 things happening while you're doing that. Just flat out tell you in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 11 things that's going on that God's doing for you. You're praying up mysteries. You're praying up things that, that your spirit knows your head hasn't got a hold of yet. And you're getting revelation knowledge from God. This is the way to get new concepts from God. They come from the inside out. You get information preached this way. It goes down in your spirit. You pray it back up out of there, and that's where the revelations come from. Hallelujah. And it edifies. A man that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. You never burn up. You never burn out. You don't get tired. You get more energy. The longer you pray in tongues, the more energized you get. I saw a 107-year-old woman running a 3K on YouTube. It was hard, it was hard to put that down watching that. <laughs> it's like... Wow. I'm thinking, I bet that lady prays in tongues. <laughs> God said you'll not uh, you'll not strive for, with man forever, but your days shall be 120. That woman's headed for 120. Hallelujah. And a healthy 120 with your eyesight unabated and your you're hearing just like Moses. He was a picture of it. He died on his 120th day. And had his eyesight, had his right mind. He was running that nation of several million rebellious people. And he just left. Hallelujah. If God did that for somebody that wasn't even born again, that was under the old covenant, don't you know that you can live for 120 and just leave? You don't have to be sick to go. There doesn't have to be anything wrong with you. There's not, you don't have to go if there's something wrong with you if you want to stay. But you don't have to stay when you make it to 120. What a good time to go. I got sidetracked. Where was I? <clears throat> I'm telling you, I get to thinking about how much more there is to God's plan. Um, and we get fumbling around with whether to sprinkle or dunk. Whether baptism, whether, whether baptism, uh, in, whether, whether the gifts went away after the apostles died or whether the gifts went away after we got the printed Bible or whenever the, these goofy ideas of when something went away in the New Testament. Let me tell you what went away in the New Testament. Nothing! Amen. If they had it in the book of Acts, we've got it times, I don't know how much by now, 2,000 years of God revealing more of it to us all the time. They didn't even have a Bible and they were getting farther down the trail than most of the churches right now. It's time. 
to come together on anything we can agree to. Jesus is Lord is a good start. The Word of God is the, is the, the Word of God is truth. We can come to that agreement. And anything that doesn't agree with the Word of God is anti-word, means it's anti-Christ, which means it's anti-truth, which means it's a lie, which means it comes from hell, and we don't want any part of it. Zero part of it. Well, this, this isn't... Uh, this isn't uh, the way to keep people from uh, leaving the church, really. I would like to get, I would like to go back to the 1970s when these uh, seeker-friendly church ideas started popping up in the body of Christ and see who dropped the ball to let that kind of nonsense ever get into the church. Do you know God's calling card to bring the lost people into the body of Christ? Miracles. It's not a pretty parking lot. It's not pretty music. It's not pretty buildings, and it's not avoiding any controversial issues like abortion, tongues, Baptism of the Holy Ghost, trans, uh, LGBTQPXZWT. It's not avoiding anything. You can't avoid anything. You can't avoid things in the Bible. You preach it. I'll preach everything in there that you know that you've got a revelation of. Ask God for revelation and more. He'll give it to us. He wants the church to come up where he's at. Come up at the place where the, that he gave us. Don't get stuck trying to make it work with this world's way of looking at things and mix it all together. And It, it won't mix. It's not supposed to mix. We're supposed to be peculiar. Peculiar people, here's what peculiar people, it's peculiar to people who don't know God. If you're against what they're for and you're for what they're against, that's peculiar. But if God's for it, we should be for it and not looking for a way to make it work. Amen. Just be for it. Why? Because when you do this the way God said to the miracles stop, start popping, when the miracles start popping, the people who are against God start watching. Miracles are God's advertisement. Miracles are God's draw. Miracles, signs and wonders is what causes people to want in on what God's got. Because they're there is no worldly answer for most of what's wrong. Every time they try to fix something, they make it worse. Modern medicine has done pretty good with physical problems that are simply physical, but there's so much wrong with people that the modern medicine can't do anything about. If modern medicine could fix things, there are... There are hundreds and hundreds, thousands of billionaires, multi-billionaires that would still be here because they had the money to buy anything modern medicine could do for them and they died young. Why? They couldn't do anything. Could God do something? Oh, yeah. It's the signs and the wonders that draw the the, ch the church ideas, how do, how do you spread the gospel? Well, we can do this. We can have a bake sale. We can have a um, rummage sale. Bring all your rummage. 
bring all your junk and we'll sell it and do something for God with the money. Huh. Yeah. What's wrong with the Bible way of doing things? What's wrong with preaching the truth and without apology and not avoiding any subjects so that the Spirit of God can get in on it and back it back when the, he'll back the truth. Amen. Watch, go read the book of Acts and watch. And every single time that the people come together and they begin to uh, do what God told them to do, God backed everything they did with signs and wonders. The first six or seven or eight chapters of the book of Acts, it was working like it was supposed to. And then you start seeing religious ideas crop up even in the book of Acts. And you read the, the New Testament and what was going on that Paul was uh, uh, coming up against in John and, and uh, different things that were going on, the Gnostics and one thing or other. It was all the devil coming at, the, coming at Christianity the, with Christianism, changing what God said into these religious ideas that weren't quite what God said. And when it's not quite what God said, it won't work. Truth will make you free. How much of a lie mixed in there does it take so it's not truth anymore? I use the disgusting, most disgusting analogy I can think of every time. How much barnyard slop do you want to put in your glass of water before you don't want to drink it anymore? That's how much that's not true you want to mix with the Bible. Why do people mix things that aren't true with the Bible? What's that? It, it is, it is rebel, rebellion is a part of it. Fear is part of it. Um, um, fear of man is a big deal in the Bible. If you, if you look up that phrase and do a little study on a fear of man, people are dealing with people and they want to get along with people and God's invisible. So <clears throat> there's this tendency for people to uh, do whatever it takes to get along with people and know that God will understand. You know, God understands the special situation I'm under here. And God understands this is a, this is a different this is a different kind of problem. It's going to require a little bend. I'm going to have to bend a little here. You know, the Bible says that I need to be all things to all people. Oh, man. Yank a little Bible out of context here and a little Bible out of context over here, and pretty quick you build this sloppy mess where you just kind of go along with whatever anybody wants. You know, Paul said he was all things to all people. Yeah, he did, right before he told them about the one God they weren't serving. The same Paul that got stoned to death for preaching that. And when he come back to life, he walked back in the same town, preached the same thing. They didn't kill him that time either. Hallelujah. This gospel is just as real today, 2023, in the United States of America on the high plains. It's just as true today as it was the day they stoned Paul and he got up and walked off. Amen. The same God that backed his word then is backing his word now. It's time. Can't put it off any longer. The war is uh, escalated, and it 
putting our head in the sand and not paying any attention to it isn't working. I, uh, I just about said something right there that God checked me. I'll probably talk about this after we go off live. In fact, let me sum this up and we'll do that. Um, did you get anything out of this tonight? I want to... Uh, I, uh, I want to make sure that I didn't leave anything undone here. I think we've said this before. And I, th this is a th message that God wants out, and I don't remember if I've done it on Tuesday night specifically or not. I want to do it in every meeting I do soon. And I want to do it several times so people can have a chance to embrace this idea. There's two things the body of Christ needs to do 2023 if you want to be in on the fight. Now, uh, I understand not everybody is going to engage in this fight, but, the, but God's got a tip of the spear and there's people want up there in the tip. And that's the people that uh, this is aimed at. Wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do is worship God. And you get there by um, the steps in Psalm 100. Come into his, come into his presence with singing. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. And when you get in the Holy of Holies, worship him. And some people have five minutes for that. Some people 10. Some people spend more time than that. Some people, some days it'll be five and some days it'll be an hour. But um, get, when you get, when you've got that green light and you're in, you're ready to go. Step two, pick a fight with the devil. Don't wait for him to come at you. You just go knock him right between. Take the flat side of that sword and hit the closest devil right between the eyes. Bam. We're not here to uh, hide from the enemy. We're here to put him under our feet. So the first, the first thing you do when you're, when you're in the right place in the morning is begin intercession. Intercessory prayer is where we're going to win this thing. And then throughout the course of the day, you're walking with God and you have set things in motion with prayer and you're just kind of listening to him. And every once in a while, you'll run into somebody that he'll want you to say something to. And a lot of times... You, it might be somebody that's having a bad day. And it's, what an opportunity. Can I pray with you? I know God, and he, he'll fix this. Let me pray. And just pray. You don't have to wait for him to say, yeah, it's okay. Just pray. See what happens. See what God can do. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that every single uh, church that's been struggling with attendance since this COVID shutdown that the devil pulled, and they all are, all over the United States, the, the, the government shut the church down and the church didn't come back. And uh, it, for the most part, not that they're not back, but they're still in their pajamas on Sunday mornings because they got kind of to where they kind of like that. Get up, have church in the recliner at the house. There's just a, one problem with that. God's army needs to come together 
in his presence together in the same spot. This electronic stuff's wonderful, but it's not to replace the, the power that God brings into united prayer in one place, one spot, when people meet together. It's time for that. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for bringing us to this place where uh, we can bring your deliverance to every Buddy and everything in the world, around the world. I thank you for the church, the ecclesia of God in the earth, rising into this revival, and renewal. The end time harvest is here. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.